What is up, y'all? It is your girl, Jada S, a.k.a. your mom friend. <laughs> and welcome back to another episode of Your Mom Friend, episode three. Hey, y'all. What is going on? Happy fall. Happy fall. Happy October, you guys. We are finally in pumpkin spice season, sweater weather season, football season. Y'all, fall is just a great freaking time. And I'm just so excited for it to be fall. We're in Q4. The year is winding down. We're about to hop into the holidays. This is always just such an amazing time. And I'm just so happy right now. <laughs> I'm so happy. I'm in really great spirits, but I just feel like that's just what the fall does. The fall does that, okay? But you guys, we're going to start off the show with some announcements, okay? We're going to do this church style. <laughs> we are going to do this church style. So if you are not following me on Instagram, or if you're not subscribed to my channel, which mm, side eye, <laughs> but um, my birthday just passed, you guys. Um, I just turned 25. So I went to Houston with my best friend to see Beyonce, and y'all, we had a freaking ball. We had such a great time, you guys. We had such a great time. It was actually my first time leaving my baby, which um, if you watch my vlog, which um, I'll have a link down below. Um, but if you watch my vlog, I was really emotional when I first left her and I felt like a great deal of mom guilt. But then I was like, you know what? Like I refuse to not have a life outside of motherhood. And this is needed. Like I needed a break. I needed time away. And it just felt so freaking good. Y'all. It felt good. 25. I feel like I, I tell people this all the time, and I've had so many conversations about 25 because a lot of my friends are also turning 25 or have turned 25 this year. And everybody just always says, like, 25 is just, like, peak adulthood. <laughs> 25 is, like, you know, where things just kind of shift and changes, like, the turning point, as I like to call it. But 25 just symbolizes a lot for me. And it's really time to just lock in and focus on goals and what I want to do with my life and how I want, you know, the rest of my 20s to kind of pan out. So I'm just blessed to be in the 25 club, y'all, because I've always been the baby of like all my friends. And so I finally feel like, OK, I'm grown, grown, period. Like, don't tell me nothing. <laughs> but Houston was so much fun, y'all. I feel like there's a lot of changes going on in my life. We're moving in a couple weeks. And I always feel like when there's a lot of change happening at once, it's just a new season. It's just a new era. It's just something big, better, and amazing is about to happen. So I'm just thanking God for, um, I'm thanking God in advance for what he is about to do um, in this season. So those are my announcements. Yes, period announcements. <laughs> Y'all know it's October, so I know all the church announcements is going to be about the pumpkin patch they have. And so make sure y'all take y'all kids, okay? Take y'all kids to the church events. Sheesh, take y'all kids. But let's get into what's in my cup. Hey, speaking of what's in my cup, I mean, can we zoom? Can we zoom? Do y'all like these mugs? If you are listening and not watching, y'all, the main character, just insert the chats. Oh, my gosh, you guys. I have some YMF mug. Ooh, you know what? I ain't going to spoil. I ain't going to spoil. I ain't going to spoil. But uh, I am just living for um, this mug. So I'm going to try to zoom in a little bit so y'all can see. But I am loving every bit of this. Y'all, that was my phone. My bad, y'all. But... Y'all, today, what's in my cup? I'm drinking some raspberry leaf tea. I'm drinking some raspberry leaf tea, y'all. I had just a whole bunch of raspberry leaf tea from when I was pregnant because they say, you know, it prepares the womb for childbirth and it's good for labor and all the things. And I was like, okay, so let me try it out. It really didn't do much for me for labor, but... It definitely does eases like menstrual cramps and it's just good for, you know, it's good for women. So this is a woman's drink. So um, I'm drinking my raspberry leaf tea, y'all. Mm. So that is definitely the drink of the episode. I definitely need like a sweetener or something to go with it because I just have it. Um, I didn't I didn't put anything in it. Like I didn't put any sugar or honey or anything in it. So it's just kind of like not that flavorful, but... Child, it's doing what it needs to do 
And that's all I expect from it. So, yes, you guys, let me know in the comments what you are drinking on this episode because your girl needs her tea, period. You guys, so today's episode, we are going to be diving into identity and identity crisis and um, the struggle that I had finding my identity um, after becoming a mom and getting to know the new person that I became after becoming a mom and just how that affected me. Um, so I just feel like there were so many points in my life where I thought I knew myself or I had, or I thought I had a good grasp onto who I was like in high school, right? In high school, I felt like I knew who I was. I was really rebellious. You know, I was really like stepping into my young adulthood or just stepping into becoming a young woman. And I just felt like I had it all in the bag. I knew what I wanted to do. I knew where I wanted to go to college. You know, I was going away for school. Like I just felt like I knew who I was, right? Child. Mm. <laughs> and then I get to college and you know, they say college is where you find yourself, you know? I was on my own, obviously. I went far for college. I went to Florida. I'm from Ohio. I went to FAMU. Shout out to my Rattlers. Hey, y'all. But um, yeah, like I went away for college and that's where um, I found myself, quote unquote. Um, no authority, you know, still had my hand out asking for money every week, but <laughs> thought I knew who I was, thought I knew what my interests were, thought, you know that that was where, and although it was, I'm not taking away from, you know, my, my college experience, but that's where I really thought, like, I knew how my life was about to pan out. I thought I knew what I was going to do. You know, that's where I quote unquote found myself. And then I step into the real world. <laughs> I step into Las Vegas. I moved to Las Vegas um, a few months after graduating. Um, and I'm on my own and I'm in the real world and I'm in straight up survival mode. And I go through a great deal of adversity. And they always say, you know, adversity builds who you are. It builds character. You see what you're made of. And although all those things are true and correct, um, still didn't know who I was. And I thought I did because of the lifestyle that I was living. I was living a very independent lifestyle. I mean, I had, you know, I was single. So I had my own spot, my own car. I was going out. I was meeting people. I was meeting friends. I spent a lot of time by myself. I did everything by myself. I went out by myself. I went to eat by myself. I went on solo dates. I was just doing everything by myself. So I felt like all the time that I had by myself um, I was just with my thoughts and with myself all the time. So I thought I had a good degree of knowing who, you know, I was. And it wasn't until my life slowed down because I was living, you know, a faster paced lifestyle. I was always out. I was doing things. I was shopping. I was eating. I was, I was just always out y'all. Like I, I've never been a homebody a day in my life. I've always been out outside <laughs> and not even, and when I say out, I'm not even talking about like the club. I'm just talking about out the house. Like I could be anywhere just doing anything. A lot of times I just wanted to go and drive and just go do things and it's, and explore. I mean, I was in a new city, so I had to go out and do things, you know, to see what my environment was, right? So, you know, I was spending a lot of time by myself and it wasn't until um my life slowed down and I became a mom. And that's when I really was like, oh, <laughs> who wait who is this? Wait, who what where and I I had so many questions about myself that I thought I had answered already just based off my past experiences. But when I became a mom, I felt a great deal of imposter syndrome. Honestly, I felt like I was like outside of my body looking at somebody else's life. <laughs> and although my maternal instincts came naturally, you know, when I became a mom, I stepped into motherhood. Like I just became a mom and that's just what it was. But I didn't know the woman behind the mom. Like, I didn't know who I was outside of motherhood. I felt like when I first became a mom, that's all I was, was a mom. Motherhood consumed me. Um, 
a lot (laughs) when I first became a mom. And, you know, that's kind of how it is because you are getting, you know, you're stepping into this new role and um, that's just all that it was for me. And child, I just didn't know what had happened. Like everything changed. Everything changed. Everything that felt familiar and comfortable changed. I mean, my relationships, my body, of course, my interest, my conversations were different. My mindset, my perspective, I mean, everything changed and I had a really hard time understanding um, what these new things were and how these new things were playing out, you guys. So I felt like an imposter because not only am I a mom, but I'm a partner. I'm living with my man, of course. I've never lived with a man before. So everything is just kind of like a learning. I'm learning a lot. And I felt like I was fighting for familiarity. Like I was fighting for something that felt comfortable that I knew. Because I remember when I... um, when, you know, I was pregnant and everything was kind of changing and we were getting ready for baby to come and everything that I felt like was mine and I felt like was me, I felt like I had quote unquote lost. For example, my apartment, right? My apartment was my everything. I, I loved my spot. I love having my own spot, my own space. And I worked really hard to get my own place. So my apartment felt like me. And then eventually I moved in with my man, right? <laughs> I moved in with my man. So I'm like, okay, my apartment, I don't have my apartment anymore. Right. And then my car, my car was, if I could, if I could go out there, if I could just find my car and give it a big old hug, I will. But y'all, my car, I had a 2010 Ford Fusion and that thing just gave up. <laughs> that thing gave up. I was in that car so much. I mean, that was like where I spent a lot of my time in my car because I was just always out doing stuff. So I spent a lot of time in my car and I just loved my car and it was mine and it was me. (laughs) And then my car just gave up on me. Like I couldn't even drive it anymore. So we had to sell it because my car, it wasn't even safe for me to drive in because I was pregnant and that thing would be stopping in the middle of the road. Y'all, I, y'all, this is out of off topic, but y'all, my car did me so dirty. Like I used to have transmission fluid in my trunk. Okay. I used to carry transmission fluid on me and my car would stop in the middle of the road. I would have to pull over, pop the damn hood, put transmission fluid in my car. I'm pregnant by the way. I'm pregnant. And then my man was like, oh no, like we ain't, we ain't doing this. (laughs) We just not doing this because my car was just so bad. So my car, we sold it. No longer had my car. And then my job, I was working um, before I got pregnant and then ended up not working anymore um, for some other reasons. But I stopped working. And so everything that had felt like it was like me or familiar, everything was just kind of gone. So now I'm in this new era, in this new state, in this new role of my life. And I don't have nothing for myself, it feels like. And so... I just struggled a lot trying to find what it is about me that felt like me. And I was just, I thought I knew myself in all these different areas of my life. Like I said, I thought I had a grasp on who I was, but that's when I really was like, okay, I have a lot of I got a lot to learn about myself. I have a lot to learn because, you know, when you go through different changes in your life, you almost have to quickly adjust. Um, But motherhood just hits different. Motherhood hits different. Motherhood is a whole different life change um, that completely just shakes your world. And that's the life change where you really have to do um, a lot of shadow work and understand, like, who are you outside of motherhood? who are you? Who are you? And I did not have an answer to that question for the longest, the longest time. And when I felt like I did, I didn't because I was mourning my old life. I, it took me a while to really like let go of who I used to be. Took me a while. I would, I would mourn my old life things I used to do, places I used to go, what I used to be into. It's almost like I was fighting for that. And like, for what? (laughs) For what, y'all? So I had to like re, 
get to know myself um, because my life just did a whole 180. And I feel like I really started to embrace and to want to get to know myself when I just finally let go of the person who I thought that I was and that I thought that I was like supposed to be. Because that's another thing. I felt like that certain people in my life or certain things, I thought that was what was like supposed to be. I thought it was just like, okay, God telling me like, okay, this, this is you. Um, But God just had a whole nother plan for my life. And I wasn't ready. (laughs) I wasn't ready for God to just like, you know, completely turn the wheel. But he did. And I thank him every day for my new life and who I am now. Because I had to just like completely rebuild my confidence. And, you know, I thought I had um, a grasp on my confidence even. I thought I was just like completely like this very confident girl and this very confident woman. And when, you know, my body changed or when my life changed or when my relationship changed, I realized like I'm not as confident as I thought. Like there were just certain traits about me that I thought were like set in stone that were there, but they really weren't. And so I think that was where it really kind of hit hard for me, Um, you know, when you just think you know, like God is like, ha, ha, ha. You think you know? Oh, baby, just wait. Just wait. So I noticed I became happier and I noticed I felt more like myself when I just let go of who I used to be. I finally just embraced my future and where I was going instead of who I used to be and where in, in like the path that I thought. Because I feel like there's just a lot of curiosity about your old life because you're like well if I never got pregnant I wonder x y and z you know and it's just like why are you thinking about your past like why are you thinking about who you used to be this new version of you need some attention that old person is no longer there she's no longer there and let me tell y'all something let me tell y'all something this new version of me is not even touching who I used to be I mean just I I'm mad about 2010 Ford Fusion. I'm mad about that. When I got a Tesla in the driveway that I walk out to every day, I'm mad about a one bedroom apartment. I'm mad about that. When we about to move into a five bedroom house in a few weeks, I'm mad about my career. When I'm literally building my brand and doing things that I never thought I would do. Like, really? Why are you so caught up on who you used to be? Why? When this new version of you is 10 times better than, so, y'all, I'm sorry, my phone is just going, cra- is going crazy. Sorry, y'all. Sorry, y'all. Um, but, but yeah, like, it's just like, what, what were you fighting for so hard that is not 10 times better, 10 times sweeter now? And so I finally, a year later, y'all, a year later, a year and some change later, I finally feel like I'm getting back to myself. And when I say back to myself, I'm not talking about back to myself as if the person I used to be, but back to myself as in like that confidence that I thought I had is really still there, but you just have to re- Build it and refine it in a way that shapes who you are now and not who you used to be now. Because I feel like motherhood just requires a different level of confidence. Motherhood requires a different level of perspective. Motherhood requires just a different level of self awareness. And, you know, that is what in reality I was fighting for. I was fighting for those things. (laughs) So, you guys. Um, I also, I also feel like, I also feel like I'm fighting for my legacy now. And that's a different kind of fight. That's a different type of hustle. That's a different perspective. And it's just like that person, the person that's fighting for their legacy and for their kids, kids, and, you know, to make their kids comfortable 
that person just wakes up a whole different beast, a whole different aura about you, right? And so that is what, and and so that is where I'm at. And I feel like I am just so much more comfortable now than I've ever been with myself because I had to realize those things. Like I had to realize, okay, this is bigger than you now. Like, okay, you you were selfishly doing things before, but now you need to selflessly do things now. And, you know, I have a family and I have a little girl who is watching me. And oh my gosh, I don't want to get emotional, y'all. I got my raspberry leaf tea, so y'all know it's that time. But it's like when a little girl is watching you and you have to literally demonstrate womanhood to a little girl, it changes you. And, you know, that's what I'm fighting for now. You know, I'm fighting for my daughter to see her mom in a light that is just like so powerful. Um, And so it's just like, how could I have ever been so, I guess, selfish? And it's just like, I think about this all the time. Like, why was I so selfish before? Like, why did I not embrace this person now when it's so much more worth it? Like now, like my life is so much more valuable to me now than it was back then. It's like a crazy, y'all, I'm tearing up. I'm tearing up. I am tearing up. (laughs) But you guys, real quick, we are going to hop into the Mompreneur Spotlight. Mompreneur Spotlight, you guys. So this week's Mompreneur is actually someone really special to me because it's my friend of almost, what, like 15 years? I don't, y'all, I'm not good with numbers, but we have been friends for over a decade for sure. Um, And it is a dear friend of mine. Her name is Shira. And Shira is a self-taught tattoo artist out of Cleveland, Ohio. So let me tell y'all something about Shira. She has always been very artistic. She's been in the tattoo industry for five years. I'm just always so proud of her because she just really takes her craft and her artistry. Um, She does not take that lightly. And I just love that about her. So if you are in... Cleveland, Ohio, make sure you hit up Inked by Shy. I'm going to put all of her information um, in the description box or on our Instagram. Make sure you tap in. Make sure you follow us at Your Mom Friend Pod, um, where I post um, the mompreneurs that I talk about. I post them later on in the week. So make sure you be on the lookout for um, the mompreneur of this week. Um, And so I'm just really happy to highlight her because, like I said, this has been um, a friend of mine for years, and I just love to see her building her business, growing her business, scaling her business. She's coming out with some aftercare products soon for tattoos, so she's just expanding. Um, So I'm always so proud of her, and I'm always supporting friends who have entrepreneurial dreams, who are also moms, and so... That's what that segment is all about. Shout out to Shira. Her handle is inked by Shy. And if you are in Cleveland, make sure you get tatted by my girl. My girl has just been constantly improving and just just doing some amazing pieces and bigger pieces. And she is just doing her thing. So I love that for her. I absolutely love that for her. So make sure y'all tap in with my girl. And... If you would like to be featured on Mompreneur Spotlight, make sure, make sure you go over to our Instagram at your mom friend pod, as well as the link will be in this description box as well if you're watching on YouTube. Um, But go there, tap on the link, fill out the Mompreneur Spotlight inquiry form, okay? Fill that out. It'll come straight to me. It'll come straight to moi. And we will literally highlight and feature your product or service in a your mom friend episode. Okay. So I'm so excited for that segment. Y'all know how I feel about my mom bosses and my women out there doing their thing. So yes, let's clap it up for this week's mompreneur. Woo! <laughs> I'm saying let's clap it up. It's only me. But anyways, so yeah, you guys, I hope that helped somebody because, um, I just feel like the biggest thing I can say when it comes to identity struggles, it's just to keep working, like keep working on yourself 
and make sure you take time for yourself. I, I think that's the biggest thing too, for me, that was a game changer was taking time for myself, like actually doing some form of self care, actually getting out the house, actually making the effort. Because I think a lot of times, I think a lot of times we just be like, oh my gosh, motherhood. And we don't make the effort or even try to try to like get back to something that we like to do or do stuff or get up and get out the house. You have to want to get out of that because I think if you, if you get stuck in there, then it has this huge emotional and mental impact on you and you have to get yourself out of there because no one is going to pull you out of there. Nobody is going to pull you out of there. You have to do it yourself. And it's hard. It was hard for me. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm here. I want to support and encourage anybody um, who feels like motherhood is doing this big one and that, you know, you're just having trouble trying to find who you are again. And I've been there. I felt it. Um, I feel like I'm just getting into like the thing. I feel like this is the thing. Your mom friend is the thing for me that is pulling me out of that space. And so I encourage anybody to just find something. It could be a hobby. It could be a new friend. It could be a new endeavor. It could be a new business. It could be just something. Just find your thing. Find your thing that makes you feel like you're doing something that you love or just makes you feel motivated or encouraged, find that thing and you will get out of this constant cycle of identity crisis, you guys. So that is my spiel, you guys. That is my spiel. That's a hard word. (laughs) So um, it is moms in the media time. Moms in the media is where I find a tweet, post, TikTok, uh, whatever <laughs> that I either find funny or that I think can spark some conversation. Um, because y'all, I be scrolling, I be scrolling. And so, um, today's mom in the media is actually not a tweet or a, I mean, it's a post, but it's like a graphic. So if you're listening, I'll just explain it. So I'm going to go ahead and insert it right here on the screen, but it says family rituals that create lasting memories family dinners, birthday and holiday celebrations, family vacations, family meetings, gratitude practice, movie nights, outdoor activities, bedtime routines, movie nights, game nights, family dinners, if I didn't already say family dinners, you know, and so I found this um, post very, um, it resonated because especially during this time, like around the holidays, which is a really fun time um, to start traditions in your household or just start doing things that make your children or your child or your family just feel excited or have them look forward to something. And I feel like that's something that I really um, am focused on implementing in my house. I also seen this post that said, you are in charge of somebody's childhood memories. And I was like, Psh. I was like, oh my gosh, like I am, I have... I have that just in my hands. And so I want to um, encourage just tradition in your home. Something like specific to your home and your children and your family. I just think it's so important. I just I just never want my child to be like, dang, like my parents ain't do nothing. Like my parents ain't take me to no vacation. My parents never did that. Like my parents, I never want my child to say anything like that. So when I seen that post, I just loved it because it kind of gave me some more ideas because you know, of of course, I definitely want to do like the family dinners and family vacations and all that. But it's so much power in just creating this safe space and safe environment for your family and for your children. So I absolutely loved that post. You guys, don't be afraid to DM me anything that you guys see. You can send it to at your mom friend pod or you can send it to my personal um, my personal Instagram or whatever, send it to me so I can feature it here because y'all, we all be on social media, child. We all be on social media. But thank you guys so much for um, your feedback. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for supporting me. Thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of your mom friend's heart. Thank you. Thank you. This is only the beginning, you guys. 
I'm sorry, y'all. My phone is going kind of crazy today. <laughs> but um, make sure um, that you guys give us a follow on Instagram at your mom. Let me slow down. Let me slow down, y'all. Let me slow down. Make sure you give us a follow on Instagram at your mom friend pod. Mm -hmm. Go to YouTube. If you're on YouTube watching this, hit that subscribe. If you are listening on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, wherever you are getting your podcasts, give us a download. Mm -hmm. Um, and yes, you guys, <laughs> I had to slow down because I was going way too fast. But thank you guys so much for tuning in. And until next time, friend. Mwah.